Ever spend hours perfecting a PCBA design only to have JLPCB basically respond with lol no? My power read and room sensor project just became a masterclass in what not to do. Let me guide you through the process of how to successfully order PCBAs for real. Quick announcement, if you're interested in this project, this is actually a smart home sensor platform that allows you to use different kind of sensors for your smart home. For example, movement, smoke detector, noise detector, temperature, CO2, brightness, infrared, emitter, infrared, receiver, all of this crazy stuff. Please go to playduino.com slash sensor and let me know. I also have a survey. So if you take the time and fill out the survey and let me know which type of sensors you're interested in, that would absolutely help. Thank you very much. I designed this power internet room sensor a while ago. And if you would like to do something like this yourself, you basically have two options. You can order your complete design as PCBA, which means printed circuit board assembled or you just order the PCB like this and then you have to order your components and assemble it yourself. And for the very first iteration of this room sensor project, I ordered PCBs and then I assembled them. There is actually a video about it if you would like to see it. Now this was the right approach back then because I had no idea if this design works. I never tested it. And this is the cheapest option that you have. You just order PCBs and then you see if they work. Now, I tested this for months now. And also I got a lot of feedback from you guys. Thank you very much. And I'm ready to order the next prototypes. And my plan is to order them as PCBA. I ordered the first PCBs at PCB Way, and they work great. But for the next prototypes, PCBAs, I would like to order them at JLC PCB. My mistake was I used this PCB way plugin right here to export my design. And then for the PCBA service, JLC PCB actually requires a CPL file, which I tried to export using file fabrication outputs and then component placement. So this is what I tried. I exported it as CSV file with millimeters and tried all sorts of different options here and generated this positions file. So this is basically a file where you can see which component will be placed where on the board. It looks like this. You have a designator mid X and mid Y. This is the coordinates and then rotation of the part and then the layer top or bottom. I had to change the names of the columns and then it worked kind of. Now you get a preview of the components and everything looked slightly shifted and it actually was slightly shifted. Who thought that? I ordered my PCBs. Everything looked fine, except for the preview, which was off. One day later, I got mail and the mail showed me this image here. And they basically told me what is going on. This is completely messed up. Um, <laughs> you have to do it again. Everything was already paid. So they will refund me the money and I have to yeah, order the PCB again. And then with the right files, it should work. So the first thing that you should remember is if the preview looks wrong, it's probably wrong, but that's not always the case. So I looked for answers. How can we export these files so that it works with JLC PCB? So I found this article on their website where they tell you how to generate this production files that are required for PCBA and they show you how the name should look like for the bomb. And then they also refer to this export script here. So there is an export script that also takes care of these positions. And so if you go there, 
you get to this script that you can run using KiCad and that script generates files. However, that's not the end of the story. If you scroll down, you find some hints about a fabrication toolkit. I don't know why they don't mention it on the website, but this is the preferred option right now. You can use this fabrication toolkit to generate your files. So in KiCad, we can go to plugin and content manager and then search for this fabrication toolkit. And this is a JLC PCB fabrication toolkit install. Apply pending changes, close. And so now we get this new icon here. And now I can export for PCB way or for JLC PCB. So if I press this, I get this options and I just leave it as is and press generate. And what it does is it creates a new folder called production inside of my project folder with these files. You need to be careful if you already have a folder called production inside of your project, this plugin will just erase whatever is inside of this folder. So be careful with that. But now I have all the files technically that I need to start ordering. So let's go to the website. And by the way, this is not sponsored. The next video will be sponsored if, if I succeed in ordering it. I'm in the production folder. So let's select first the zip file. This is the Gerber files. This is how the PCB looks like. Let's open this. It's uploading the file and then it's automatically detecting the size of the file and also how many layers it has. It should automatically detect. So let's see. Yes, so it automatically detected. We have four layers. I want an FR4 board, not some fancy other stuff. Then the dimension is already the correct one. For this order, I would like to order 10 pieces because I need a lot of them. I would like to place one of them in every room and in the living room, even two of them. It is just one design, single PCB, 1.6 millimeters thickness is fine. Green color is fine for now. White silk screen is fine. FR4 is fine. I would like to use lead free. The copper weight is fine. This is fine. Fine, 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 fine. This is a nice feature. Here you can um, have markings on your PCB and they have a new feature, which is 2D barcode. I could add the prefix play Duino, for example, and then have a 10 by 10 QR code with a unique number, unique serial number. That's nice, submit. I don't have gold fingers like RAM modules and also no holes at the edge. No, no, no. Okay, I'm ready. If I order right now, I would get this. But I don't want this. I want this without these fancy cables, of course. So I want to do is I want to also enable PCB assembly and we will assemble on the top side. The bottom side is empty. It's just the top side that will be populated. Yeah, let's keep it at economic assemble side, top side, PCBA quantity 10, tooling holes. Yeah, they need to add some tooling holes. They can add some holes, I don't care. Confirm parts placement, um, TLC PCB engineer will correct your parts placement and polarity. I would say that's not too bad. Um, yeah, that that won't hurt if they double check. So part selection by customer. I don't need a photo confirmation. I think it's uh, unnecessary. Conformal coating, no packaging, everything's fine. Board cleaning, no big components, no. Deep panel boards, no. Add paste for unpopulated pads, no. 
nitrogen reflow soldering. Oh, okay, that's fine. I don't need a stencil. They will need a stencil. <laughs> now here comes the crazy part. If I now press next, what happens is I see the PCB. Okay, that's fine. And I also see the bottom of the PCB. And this one is interesting because this is wrong. Everything is mirrored and I don't know why, because my, my data is correct in this case, but the preview is wrong. In order to get PCBA service, I need to add the BOM file and it was already exported here. Let's add the BOM file. And I also need the CPL file, which is the positions of the components. Let's process this stuff. And now I get back an error because the below parts won't be assembled due to data missing. C49 and C50 designators don't exist in a CPL file. That's fine because these two components are not placed. I just kept an empty space so that I can place them if it's required, but I don't need them to be placed. So in this case, I can continue. Okay, and the next step is pure magic. So they are actually searching for my parts now and you already get the cost of this of this part. So for example, I have a lot of capacitors with the value 22 microfarads and this thing searches for these components and then it finds the component. And in this case, it takes a 10 volts because that's also fine. 22 microfarads, 20%. You should double check everything if it's fine. And some parts, some parts will fail. However, you could, if you want to, only use parts from LCSC. This is where JLC PCP then purchases their parts. So if I insert this capacitor here, for example, I find exactly the same capacitor. If you only use parts from here and also include this part number in your KiCad component, then this step will be automated and everything is just filled in. In my case, it's not because I didn't include this number because I didn't know that this is possible. And so some parts it doesn't find, for example, this one microfarad, 100 volts, 1206, let's search for it. And it already gives me some suggestions. So this is 1210, which is wrong. This is 1206. This is great. We can use this one. And you also see the stock and then we can select it. All right, let's insert the components. As soon as you filled out all of this, you click next. And I do not want to place my unselected parts. And I need to switch to standard PCBA because I have some components that require special treatments. Do not place. And now it's getting interesting because now I see a preview of where my components will be. And I need to double check all of the polarities. So let's check. So if you go in there, you see all of the components are now placed where they should be and not like this. <laughs> Still, we need to double check the polarity. So let's double check the polarity because this, for example, looks um, yeah, not right. So let's start with the capacitors. They have no polarity, that's fine. They have no polarity, it's fine. No polarity, no polarity, no polarity, no polarity, but um, let me fix that. Maybe put it right. This thing needs to be here. Yeah, that's better. Okay, let's continue with the capacitors. This has no polarity. No polarity, that's fine. This one right here, this one has polarity. So we need to double check in the KiCad file. We have ground here and plus five volts here. So plus is here, that's fine. The same for this one. 
plus right here, that's fine. D5 is completely wrong. <laughs> yeah, in a, in a buck converter, ground is not connected to ground here. And so this is wrong. We need to put it in like this. Cathode is here. Yeah, it's completely wrong. Yeah, there are two different ways of rotating. This is obviously not what we want, but this is what we want in this case. Now we have the cathode here. This, this is wrong. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't matter. I don't know, really wrong. MD1, yeah, this one actually has polarity. <laughs> yes. That's good. And now you also see that the silk screen is correct now. So it's clearly correct now. Here we need to align pin one with pin one. So like this should be fine. Let's double check. This is pin one. Perfect. This is wrong. <laughs> Let's rotate it like this and then we're done. Next. Do not confirm automatically. I want to double check. They shouldn't produce without my consent. Okay, so PCB price. PCB price, yeah. The price looks very low, but actually I have some parts already pre-ordered, so they are on stock. And that's why it looks so cheap, but it's actually not. Save to cart, it's a development board, let's say. Save to cart. I will try to order that again, and I really hope it works now. If this video was helpful, please like. If you're interested in the sensor project, please visit playduino.com slash sensor. If you want to get the latest news on this project, please subscribe to this channel and also ring the bell because then you get notified whenever there's something new. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.